Come along with me with the tips and tricks of creating face tracking. Take a visit at the GitHub Binnacle James VRC face tracking. Click on the wiki tab for useful information about how to set up avatars. The blend shape setup will go over the Serenipole face tracking shapes as part of the Vive Serenipole documentation. First tip, clean up your workspace. Create vertex groups to hide any meshes in your way. You can use the mask modifier with these created vertex groups. Next tip is to create mask. First select your object, then go to edit mode. We want to see through the model, so we want to turn on x-ray. Select the left side of the head for to create the left side mask. Create a new vertex group and assign it to that vertex group. You can use Control shift m to mirror the selected vertexes. You can use the vertex groups that you created to mask out the shape keys. You can create a new shape key with, from the mix with the mask applied. This is how you split out shape keys. Remember to remove the vertex group. You can hit X to clear out all the shape keys. Now if we don't have shape keys that actually have what we want, we can actually sculpt them. In edit mode, hide the mesh you want to sculpt with the H key. Let's go back into sculpt mode and use a fill mask. In edit mode, use Alt H to bring back the mesh. Use elastic deform to sculpt the mesh. Create a new shape key and we're going to call it I widen and set the value to 1. Now with elastic deform, now you can sculpt the eyes for I widen. Mess with the values to see your shape keys in action. Now if the avatar has a face rig, you can use the bones to create the face tracking. Pose the face tracking shapes with the face rig, then you can save them in the pose library to save the shapes. Have the bones highlighted when you save each pose. With the bones highlighted, you can apply the pose in the pose library. Let's take our pose from the pose library and convert it to a shape key. Go into object mode and select your mesh to add the face tracking, then select the modifier tab. There will be an armature modifier existing in here. In the modifier, change the name to what you want the shape key to be called. We can use this to save our pose as a shape key. Reset the pose after saving the shape key. Go back to mesh to see your new pose shape key. Now the parameters to drive face tracking are listed in the GitHub wiki. Not all these parameters have to be used. These allow more flexibility for avatar creators. Add the avatar parameters to the parameters for the avatar. Set it as a float. This is case sensitive. Create an animation for each of these parameters and also a zero state animation. Now we want to edit the FX layer to control those blend shapes. To get to the animator, go to window slash animations slash animator. Create a new layer, name it for your blend shape you want to control, and then set the value to 1. In the parameter tab, add the float that you just created in the parameter list. Back to the layers tab, add a blend tree to your new layer. Double click the blend tree to go into it. Select your face tracking float value. Select the plus icon and add two motions to your blend tree and deselect automatic thresholds. Add the animation that you just created and also the zero state. The zero state should go at zero and then your animation should be at one and you can change the threshold to change the sensitivity. To create the animations, go into play mode. Select your FX layer and add it to your animator. To get to the animations window, go to window, then animations, then animation. Select your new face tracking animation. Press the record button. Select the mesh with the blend shapes. Then select the blend shape dropdown. Scroll down to the corresponding blend shape. Drag the slider to the right to apply, then apply to the animation. This is our mouth upper up animation. For the zero state, we want to set the values to zero. Just right click and then add as key. This will reset our values for our face tracking. While still in play mode, to test the animation, go into parameters and set the value to one. You should see it change. Now face tracking has a lot of shapes. 
This makes it a little bit difficult to create all the animations for them, so it's nice to use a template to create these. I do have a face tracking template available on my GitHub at VRC face tracking unity and demo. Another helpful tool is the Avatar 3.0 Manager by VR Labs. This will help us merge our template. Now, it's nice to have a way to test it within Unity. Luma's AV3 emulator can help you with this. Uh, this has a way to, for OSC to go into and also other ways to test it. Download and import the Unity packages. Now, after importing Gesture Manager, you should see VR Labs. Click that and add that new tab. Now there will be a VRC face tracking folder. In here, there's a face tracking templates. I'm gonna select the full face tracking, 119 bits. Select your avatar and add it to the gesture manager. We wanna add the template to the FX layer. There's our existing FX layer here. We're gonna add an animator to merge. Select our uh, template and merge onto current. So it's gonna take this other animator and it's gonna merge all the parameters in all our layers. Now in the avatar descriptor, there's an additive layer. We want to add the additive layer to control the eye movements. To now add a menu to your avatar, just click the add a new menu, add a new sub menu called face tracking. You can use the template to add a way to turn on and off face tracking. The submenu is found in the face tracking templates. Now we want to add all the parameters we want to have network synced. These are all our face tracking parameters. There are four control bulls that are used, uh, eye tracking, face tracking, eye dilation, and visemes. You do not need a network sync binary blend. This is for internal animator reasons. Select left eye X, right eye X, eyes Y, left eye lid expanded squeeze, right eye lid expanded squeeze, jaws open suck, mouth upper up inside, mouth lower down inside. My template also includes a binary system. This system is a way to compress the parameters needed for face tracking. This is, was due to a limitation of parameters that you could have on an avatar. Now we wanna skip over all these other floats and then we'll just select all the ones with the numbers on the end and negative. These are gonna be our binaries. The last one should be jaw forward. We can see the parameters that just got created. Now we want to save the state for eye tracking, face tracking, eye dilation, and then the visum toggle. The avatar should now be set up. We're going to test it. Select tools and then add the emulator. Now in play mode, we can now use the avatar like we're in the game. We turn on face tracking and now we'll scroll down and then control our floats. This is a great way to find if you have any issues with your animations. It looks like my animation for my mouth lower is not correct. I need to fix this. I'll come back to that later. So for the binaries, you go into the binary uh, section of the bulls, and then you can turn on each of the bulls to change the shapes. Now I'm gonna set up the FX animator again, and I'm gonna change that mouth lower down. Ah, it's all yellow, that's not good. It looks like I didn't split out that lower down. Well, I'll just create a new animation for it. So you just select the animation, Set the value to it and change the zero state animation. Do note that the animation is pointing to the body mesh. Your face tracking on this template is supposed to be for the body. Now, if it's not the body mesh, you can double click it and rename it to whatever the mesh that face tracking is on. But you have to do this for every animation. Going back into Luma's emulator, you can actually see that we fixed it. OSC is disabled by default. In order to go to it, go to the expression menu, then OSC, then enable it. My face tracking toggles are off right now. I need to enable them. Congratulations, now you have face tracking.
If you have things that are not working properly, you can go to the config menu and then debug. This is where you can see all the parameters change in real time. If you have any additional questions, you can join our Discord face tracking community. We'll be gladly to go through any problems that you may have.